Welcome back to the 30 day fishing challenge, 30 day video challenge, whatever I'm calling it right now. Today's video is going to be drift fishing for crappie. Something that a lot of people do for basically any fish, but you basically want to set up, for example, right here. I got a perfect wind for this. The wind is going from left to right across my screen. I'm going to set up right on the top of this point and then drift all the way through it. And right now you can't really tell, but these are all these are all fish on the bottom. I'm sitting still, so it looks really funny. When I turn my motor on, I start going over and see there's a fish suspended right there. When I go start going over it, there's crappie and bass and pretty much in, the entire food chain is uh, scattered throughout the lake bottom right now. That's actually a, see that that's what I'm talking about. They're just scattered all over the place. That's one sitting right under the boat. Also, people ask, why is there straight lines? Why aren't the arches? I'm not moving. It says I'm going point one, but I'm not moving. I got that thing spot locked up there. I'm not moving these fish. That signal's going down, and as the fish move out from underneath my boat, that's when these lines go away. Right now, there's a fish sitting right underneath my boat. That's crazy. It's probably a crappie. It doesn't look that big. Um, if it turned kind of this red color, that would be probably walleye, bass, See that now the fish is swimming away outside the cone. See it disappearing, and then it disappeared. It was right below my cone and went away, but if it's the red color, that's usually a bigger fish. Walleye, bass, northern pike, muskie, catfish, something. But today we're doing drift fishing. I'm gonna show you the drift, fish, drift fishing setup that I got tied on. It's basically a Carolina rig, but instead of a jig, like a weighted style jig that a lot of you are used to, I'm going to be using a floating jig some of you may have used it, some of you might not have. A lot of, well, a lot of people use it up north for probably walleye fishing. It's basically a Lindy rig setup instead of the, the float being above like a, an Aberdeen hook or an octopus hook. It's actually built into the actual jig. So I'm gonna show you that setup right now. And there are a bunch of fish below me. So we're gonna motor up above them and then let the wind just push us back. Yep, that just happened. That just happened. I don't think I was recording, but uh, they literally just whipped the horseshoe right around me within 70 yards, 50, 60 yards, something like that. It'd be one thing if he just went on the one side and just kept going up the lake, but he literally just whipped the horseshoe right around me. Like, forget about the fact that I'm just sitting here. It's, I just don't do that. Look at that. I got waves coming in at all sides. What a dingleberry. Anyway. Not gonna let that bum me out. We're gonna go catch some fish. Here's our setup. First of all, eight foot ACC. This is a, yeah, see what I mean? Thanks bud, appreciate you. There's a PC Fun Honor XT 1000 size reel, eight pound monofilament, and here's the setup. It's basically a Carolina rig. Got a uh, bullet weight that's pegged, a little rubber bobber stop, peg weight. And then a uh, swivel. Well, let's see if we can get you in focus here. Yeah, right there. Swivel. This is a quarter ounce weight. Might be a little heavy. Might have to go down to an eighth. But this is the floating jig. Yes, it is a floating jig. Crazy, I know. But that's what this is. It's a floating jig head. Uh, size one hook, I believe. And we're gonna be tipping them with minnows today. Live minnows, drift fishing. Crappie, who knows what we're gonna catch, but most likely crappie. They're, they're spread out here. I'm gonna show you again on the 2D as we kind of run up and then drift through them. So that's what we're gonna do. Let's get to it. There's a tap. There's another tap. Come on. Is that fish? Yep, fish is on. He was just hanging on with it. He was just hanging on to it. Crappie number one. Still got my minnow too. He was just swimming with it. 
hooked him in the tongue. I need a new minnow because this one's dead. Crop number one. I like to hook them right under the lip, the top of the head, not into the brain so they can still swim. There we go. There's a ton of them down there. You can see them on the live scope. A ton of them down there. They're just really spread out. That float is gonna keep that, ooh, is that a bite? Keeps that, yeah, there's a, that was a bite. That was a really soft, real soft bite. That float keeps that minnow probably four or five feet off the bottom, which is kind of where they're sitting right now. There we go. He's still alive, but his jaw's pretty messed up there. Let's try to rehook him. And the whole point of this is if you really don't have, let's say, a fancy trolling motor or any of the electronics that I have or pretty much a lot of these YouTube or tournament guys have, drift fishing is the most basic style of fishing. And if you can have a decent lake map, have some sort of Navionics or Lake Masters chip that shows you kind of the, the outline, the contour lines that you're going to drift over. This is a perfect setup for it right now. We're drifting right along those contour edges. And these crop are set up in 19, 20 to 22 feet, somewhere in there. But they're real spread out. This is a great tactic if you don't have all the fancy stuff. You're just drifting through. This crop here in deep water right now. That floating jig keeps it three, four, five feet above that, that lake bottom. The bites have been real subtle both those times. I mean, it just felt like a barely a tap. All right, got a fresh minnow on. Gonna kind of get the boat situated here. Which way I want to drift? I want to drift this way. So one thing, if you even if you don't have an electric motor, use your big motor, kind of keep on that same contour. It seems like these fish are on that 21 foot contour. That's where we're gonna try and stay along that 21 feet line. You do need a fairly consistent wind. Right now that we're getting pushed 0.4 to 0.5, which is pretty good. There he is. There he is. Super light taps on those minnows. I bet if I was using plastics, they'd probably hit it harder. Of course, I could throw a plastic on. Yeah, we got minnows. Might as well use them. Oh, dang, there it was. When they hit, it feels like the rod tip is. There's some taps. Feels like the rod tip unloads. There he is. Got him. Super soft bites, my goodness. But that's kind of what a minnow bite is. It's usually not as heavy as that, that jig bite. He choked it too. Ooh, he choked it. Yeah, you got her deep. Right underneath that bottom jaw and up through the top of the head. Not into the, not between the eyes, just in front of the eyes. The way it doesn't kill him. There's one. Just trying to adjust with the trolling motor, get, get myself back on a 21 foot mark. And there we go. Well, I think you guys get it. It's a very simple tactic. Very effective when these fish are stacked up on a certain contour, like they are today. That 21 foot seemed to be the magic number. Not very big, but real effective way to catch these crappie when they stack up on that hard to soft bottom transition once they get into that fall transition. But even right now, late summer, 
works great. So it's a little floating jig. It looks like about a quarter ounce size jig, but it's it's all cork. Uh, I believe it's a size one hook. And then I have the barrel swivel, just a barrel swivel. And then I got an, a quarter ounce bullet weight pinned with that rubber bobber stop. I'll link everything below that I used for this. You can check it out in the video description. Appreciate you watching this series, this 30 day video challenge series. I appreciate you watching this series. I do appreciate you watching this uh, 30 day video challenge series. Um, again, all this stuff will be linked below. If you got any comments or questions about the rig, how to fish this setup, drift fishing in general, you can post them in the comments section below or you can either message me on either Facebook or Instagram. I appreciate you watching. We'll see you.